Let's welcome Gia to the stage. Hi, everyone. This looks, um, you guys look like you know how to party. So I want to start by inviting everyone to a party. So in Vision Education, our mission is to transform the lives. And we focus on students furthest from opportunity, students who are going to be first to graduate from college. We do this with two branches. The first one is we operate schools. We run schools. The second one is we have our consulting division, Envision Learning Partners, that takes our innovation and shares it with schools and districts across the country. So an and ELP, Envision Learning Partners, mission is to ensure that every single student in the United States is, has access to quality performance assessment. So I'm really happy to announce that we are joining forces with SCALE, the Stanford Center for Assessment Learning and Equity, to make that reality come true, and we're throwing a party. So, oops, no, not me yet. Um, so if you can make it tomorrow night at the lot, come and join us and celebrate, and let's be on this movement together. So I want to first start uh, sharing my personal story. Because often people ask me, where do you get your motivation? Because the work is hard. And my answer always comes from my experience and my background. So my, it's not coming up. Oops. I was uh, born in Vietnam. I came to the United States as a Vietnamese refugee after the Vietnam War when I was eight years old. Um, I was an English learner. I grew up in poverty. And I did not feel like I belonged. And during that time, the stereotype of refugees were that they were foreign, they were different, and they were not smart. And that's how I felt. I, I want to take you back to my first day of high school. I was 13 years old, and I just moved into a brand new neighborhood. Nobody knows me in this new high school. This was, this was going to be my new start. I was really excited. Nobody knows that my family is Vietnamese. Nobody knows that my parents can't speak English. Nobody knows that my family relies on food stamps. My first day of school, I attended all seven classes in this comprehensive high school. The very last class was my geography class, and Mr. Smith told the class, everyone, share your name and where you're born. My heart dropped. I had my head down. And when it came to my turn, I looked up, and I said, my name is Gia Trung, and I'm born in Miami, Florida. The teacher looked at the attendance roster, looked at my face, and said, no, you're not. Are you sure? My head dropped. I looked up again, and I said, my name is Gia Trung, and I was born in Miami, Florida. The teacher then went to the next person, and I looked at the clock, waiting for the bell to ring. When the bell finally rang, I picked up my stuff. I ran out of that classroom as fast as I could, out of the school, and straight home. I locked myself in my bedroom, and I cried. I said, I hate this country, and I hate my mother. Because my mother told us before we left, that we were going to America, the land of the free, and the land of opportunity. And I did not feel free. It took me many, many years to learn to accept myself, to accept my beautiful, beautiful history, and to unlearn what the, the society storytellers were telling about me, that I was not worthy, that I was foreign, that I was different, that I was not good enough. And that path of unlearning was paved by some incredible, in, incredible mentors of color. That path of unlearning was supported by experiences that affirmed my identity. One of those examples was taking ethnic studies courses in, in college, especially taking Vietnamese American history. It was the very first time of school that I saw myself in the curriculum. And that meant everything to me. At Envision, we really believe that when our students feel like they belong, and they know it, and they believe it, they are more engaged and more motivated. And when they are more motivated and engaged, 
they find the inner scholar and warrior within them. And they get the grit and determination to persist in the face of adversity. And our students feel unstoppable. I'm pointing at this, but maybe I shouldn't be pointing at this. And that's our vision, kids that feel unstoppable. I'm going to take you to a second story. And this is a story of Envision with the deeper learning community of practice. So many years ago, probably seven, eight, nine years ago, organizations like Envision, uh, new, big picture, international, EL, high tech high, we all got together and we found some commonality. And, and our commonality really was about deeper learning. So we spent a great amount of time defining deeper learning, coming up with the student outcomes or deeper learning competencies, and then collectively we started spreading deeper learning. And then we started having discussions that deeper learning has a race problem. That the students that had access to deeper learning were students were, that were already advantaged. That the students that are furthest for opportunity most of whom in our country are students of color and low-income students, did not have access to deeper learning. And that we needed to address that. I think today, we're grappling with a question of what is the relationship between deeper learning and equity? I believe that that relationship is a virtuous cycle. That deeper learning practices and experiences is a path to equity and equitable outcomes for kids. But equitable conditions enable deeper learning to happen. And I would say that equitable conditions, if they're not there, deeper learning is not possible. And that they have an interdependent relationship. And when I'm talking about equitable conditions, they're the conditions where students can show up and their identity is affirmed where their community, their history, their background is valued and acknowledged in the curriculum, where they have relationships with each other and with their teachers so that they know that they're part of a larger community of care and high expectations. So at Envision, we really strive to make sure that our kids tell their stories. So we believe like, the first day of school for me, first day of high school, I wasn't able to tell my story. And I feel like the storytellers in society drowned out my story. And if we want to change the story, we have to change the storyteller. We have to have spaces to give voice to folks that were voiceless. And when students feel seen and heard and valued, they can do anything. And it's, I think it's our responsibility as educators to do that. So this is how we do at Envision. Um, and I know you do it in, in, in different ways. At Envision, we do it with shared common equity beliefs. This is shared with our whole organization. The first belief is that we believe that inequity in education arises from institutional racism, classism, language bias, and other systemic bias. So as an organization, we recognize systemic oppression. And that's a start. We also recognize that we can achieve educational equity and we can eliminate the achievement gap. But we can only do that in collaboration and in community with each other. And finally, we believe that when we graduate students who, have, who are academically competitive and they have a strong sense of self, they understand their place in the world and they know how to make a difference we are moving towards equity. The way that we actualize these beliefs is through our portfolio defense system. So our students in the 8th grade, in the 10th grade, in the 12th grade stand in front of a panel with their rigorous work and they defend that they belong and that they should be advanced to the next level or advanced to college. And we think that they're not necessarily um, proving it to the panel. They're proving it to themselves. They're building the confidence. And with confidence, your worldview changes and your potential for your future changes. One of the um, things, uh, Marnie Curry writes about portfolio defense and its relationship with rituals like firewalks. 
When you have a fire walk, you have a, a, a participant walk over hot coals, and at the end, the hope is that you unleash the power within, and your, the, the life of this walker is changed. This rite of passage is the system that we've created to enable that every single student in our system feels a sense of, of belonging. Not by chance, but by, by design. Many of you, portfolio defense may not be your first step <laughs> to create these equitable conditions for your students. I believe your first step, if you're a teacher, if you're a school leader or an organizational leader, is to do community or assets mapping. So if you're a teacher, map out the stories of your students. Know the, the assets of the community, the relationships within that community, the resources that they already have that they bring in. Bring their history and their stories to the curriculum. If you're a school leader, organizational leader, go out in the community and meet those assets in the community. And see that relationship and listen to the, those untold, unheard stories. And let those voices inform policy, inform curriculum, inform practice. I really do believe in deeper learning. <laughs> I wouldn't be in front of you if I didn't. I believe that deeper learning is a path to equity. But it is not possible if we are not working on equity ourselves and set conditions for our students to learn in an equitable way. And we need to close that virtuous loop and our students and, and I would say our staff would be very thankful for it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Gia.